Hi, I am Naim Akram Malik from Test Automation TV. This video is about creating a webhook in N8N using Postman. I am going to use Postman for testing the webhook as I will be building it and I will also show you how Postman can simplify the process of creating a webhook. In this video, I am going to create a GET based webhook. Webhooks can be of different types. GET is one of the types which is usually created to get data from n n A webhook is an endpoint which allows other systems to connect with your n n workflow. I am going to add a first step as webhook over here. When I will add a new webhook, you will see that by default the HTTP method is selected as get here. This means that all webhooks by default are created to retrieve data from your n 8 hook. And there is a unique URL given over here. We can click this URL to copy it. There are other things like authentication which we are going to keep to none for the sake of this example and respond immediately which we can come back to later. So if I click on this URL or unique resource locator it is going to be copied to the clipboard. After copying this to the clipboard I am going to open postman and in postman I am going to click the new button to create a new HTTP request. As you can see that this request also has got get selected by default. So in the URL field over here I am going to paste the URL which I had copied earlier. I can go back to the webhook the workflow and I will click listen for test event. It says listening for test event make a get request to this URL. So I will go back to postman and I am going to click send over here. When I will click send you can see that a message workflow was started has been returned. This means that this workflow was started and you can see all of the information by the n 8 webhook when we click the get button in the postman. So now you have a very simple workflow setup. Let us suppose if you want to use some parameters in your get request then how are you going to do that? To introduce parameters I will go back to my postman and I am going to add some parameters over here in the params tab. For example, I can say I will have a parameter name and after this I will start the workflow again by clicking listen for test event and over here I am going to click send. Please notice that I have not supplied any value in the value over here and now the name field has been returned as empty. Now in the next step if there is any next step like for example reading data from somewhere reading data from Airtable or reading data from Google Sheets we will be able to use this parameter. For example I will close the workflow and I will click over here once again and I will add an Airtable node over here and I will say search records. I will click the search records node over here. To access Airtable you need to create an account and you need to generate a personal access token which I have already done and I have supplied it over here. The important thing to notice here is that although we did not add all of this data to our webhook it is present here because we made a call from the webhook to our workflow and when we did this earlier the 
webhook extracted the data and now we are able to use the example data to construct our webhook workflow piece by piece for example the name piece of data the name variable which i added earlier is shown over here and we can <coughs> use the name to search a record but before that we will have to select a database and a table i have a context table and i am going to select it i will drag this variable name over here just like this and i will create a formula i will click at the end of this expression after the double curly braces and i will say equals to a field from my airtable database i have a name field in my airtable database there is one more detail because the name is a string or it is a text data i need to add these single quotes around my expression so i have these double curly braces and single quotes over here which are very important and now for example if i go back to the webhook and i say listen for the event and i supply a name parameter over here like name and i click send the workflow will be started and now this data will be available to the air table step here you can see that the value name has been received by the workflow i will click over here on the search records node and now you can see that name equals to name we can click the execute step over here to fetch data from air table here you can see since i had data in air table this data has been queried and returned there are multiple options over here to simplify things we can uncheck the return all option over here and we can set a limit of the number of records which will be returned i have set it to 1 only and i will close the workflow the next thing is that how we can return this record to the caller of our webhook that is also very simple but we will need to change the settings of this webhook first i will open the webhook and i am going to change the respond option to using response to webhook node and now i am going to close the webhook and over here i am going to add a new webhook type which is respond to webhook the icon of webhook and respond to webhook are similar but they are entirely different things so over here we have the default option respond with first incoming item i can leave it unchange and close this one and now i am going to click the execute workflow once again after starting the workflow i am going to come to the postman and here you can see previously we were getting the message workflow was started but now we are going to get a different message which will be the data related to the record which will be returned from the air table i will click send all right here you see that we have gotten data returned from air table it is possible to save data into a table it is possible to update data into a table just like this but i am going to show that to you in other videos for that please do subscribe to my channel there are some other considerations as well before we wind up this video let us go back to the webhook in the workflow and add some sanitation steps as well for example what happens if the user does not provide a name parameter over here in that case we can add an if condition over here and that if condition can check for us if the user has supplied the name parameter or not
we will simply drag this query dot name over here and say query dot name is not empty in that case our workflow is going to go to search records but if the query dot name is empty then we can add another response to this webhook but we are going to configure this respond to webhook slightly differently we are going to respond with no data and we are going to add an option we will return a response code 400 which means bad request and we will add optional headers like for example a header named message with the value name parameter was not supplied all right now let us save the workflow and start the workflow again this time i am going to remove the value of the name parameter from here and i am going to send a request once again in this case you can see that 400 bad request was returned and if you go to the response headers down below we will be able to see the message which says name parameter was not supplied it is possible to add another if over here to check if no records were returned but i would let you figure that out yourself if you have any questions about this workflow please feel free to ask i would love to make more tutorials and i would love to answer your questions as well i am naim akram malik i am a senior test automation engineer and i would love to see you as a subscriber of this channel and see you in the next video